Namaskar, everyone. So today we are very happy to have Itai Arashi uh, talking about the uh, kidney exchange. So Itai got the PhD at Technion and then went to Harvard Business School to do postdoc with uh, Avin Roth, who won the Nobel Prize uh, last month. So we are going to have Itai talking about on his work in uh, along this exciting research area. So I'll tell you. Uh, about recent work and some, if I have time also, about uh, work in progress. This is something we just done. Uh, so it's about chains in kidney exchange. So let me start with uh, uh, some background on kidney exchange, Here's, uh, on, on, on kidney transplantation. So uh, uh, there's lots of people on the waiting list, there's still no more than 90,000. Okay, so here's some numbers for two, 2011, and the number of that of people who are joining the list is uh, larger than the people who leave the list. You see here numbers for people who are transplanted from cadaver kidneys, and here are numbers for people transplanted for living uh, from living donors. Uh, giving a transplant from uh, living donors will give you more life years than uh, deceased donors, sometimes twice as much. It can reach up to 30 years versus for 15 years. So you see there's a today already more uh, people who are giving from living donation than people who are giving deceased donation. Every, every, every deceased donor has two kidneys. Uh, so in, in most, uh, except maybe Iran that I know of in, in the world, is, it's not allowed to sell kidneys. Um, in, uh, in Iran, there's actually a market for this, and uh, regulated and supposed to be regulated. It's going out of control a bit. Uh, but uh, and prices are going very down, very low. Um, you see sometimes uh, now people writing on graffiti next to hospitals that are willing to sell their kidneys for very low prices. So if you're if you're uh, if you want to donate a kidney to someone you know um, you, and you're compatible, you go give a transfer. But if you're incompatible, then what you then this opens the door for exchange. So this is a two-way exchange. Uh, between two incompatible pairs, pair one and pair two. Here they're incompatible because they're of their blood types. So an exchange is just donor, if, if they switch the donors, so donor one can give to recipient two, donor two can give to recipient one. So this is a, this is a two-way exchange, and you can do more than that. Uh, one constraint, important constraint on the, uh, those cyclic exchanges uh, is that they have to be simultaneous. So you want to have this requirement that you don't, your donor doesn't give a kidney before you get a kidney. Okay, so because if donor one will give to recipient two, and only tomorrow donor two will give to recipient one, uh, and for some reason he fails to do so, uh, reneges or gets sick or whatever, recipient one remains without a kidney, but also without the donor. He cannot exchange anymore with it. Okay, so those, this means that those cycles have to be short. Because you need to do everything simultaneously, there's too many uh, things involved in this, surgical teams and so forth. So usually we do two ways or three ways, but there's, and, and that's it. So here's a three-way exchange. This means six simultaneous surgeries. Um, sometimes we see altruistic donors, and there's more and more of those. Um, and then they can start change. They don't need to close a cycle. So it's convenient to think, it's convenient to think about these things as a graph where no, there's an incompa incompatible pair. Okay, and the link is if there's a donor, if the donor of this pair can give to the recipient of this pair. Sometimes you have multiple donors for each recipient. Uh, you can add to the model of that. But, okay, but these, this is how it looks like. And this is a solution. There's an exchange here, a three-way here, and a chain here. So yeah. if there's a compatible pair, then they will exchange that pair right away? If there's a compatible pair? Yeah. They can join. There's some. It, that's pure benefit to everyone. But in practice, they they, they do join. There's very few, but there are some that join. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Um, how to get them to join is an interesting question. Uh, I, I'll mention a few words about this. So, what are the design issues? So, in the beginning, when people uh, started to talk about kidney exchange, it was how to come up with a large-scale kidney exchange program and getting hospitals to uh, uh, 
who share their pairs. And people talked about preferences of individual surgeons, of the surgeons themselves and the patients. Then in uh, previous work, we talked about uh, hospitals are, are the ones that, with incentives. And I think uh, we wrote about this. Uh, this is together with Al. And I think there's still room to do there. But basically, what happens here is that hospitals are with, and they say it, they, they don't hide this uh, issue, but they, what they do is don't share with the kidney exchange program the pairs that they can easily match or internally match. So think about now there's a clearinghouse and a kidney exchange program. There's two, uh, two leading ones in the country, uh, and hospitals share, the, share their information about their incompatible pairs to the program. Now it's all in one data set. You're looking for now those cycles and chains. And some of those hospitals are not sharing everything. They can, if you're easy to match, they might save you for a while. Or, or internally, if they can match you internally, they will do that. And the part of this cause, this is one reason, but other reason too is that we see, uh, this is something we'll see here in this talk, we'll see that there's uh, many more highly sensitized patients than we used to think there are in the pool. And as a resulting, as a result of this, we need a more longer chain. And this is what this talk is about, to see, that, to see a little bit the data and then to see some theory that uh, so, somewhat explains the data. Okay? And if I have time, I'll talk a little bit about dynamic matching in, the, in this setting. Okay, so a little bit about uh, <coughs> compatibility. So here's the blood type hierarchy, who can give to who. AB can give to itself, uh, is the, can, get, can only give to itself, O can give to everyone, and so forth. Another, type, another important thing that matters is tissue type and compatibility. So every one of us has uh, antibodies, and we develop antibodies. If you, if you get a trans transfusion, you develop antibodies. If you get a transplant, you, get, you, you develop antibodies to the one person you've got a transplant from. And if you have a antibody to the antigens of the donor, you cannot take his kidney. It's, it's very simple. In the data, you see just list of antibodies, the antigens, and you see if, if one of them appears in the list of antigens. And then, uh, most of us are low sensitized. That, so there's a measure for this in the literature. It's called percentage reactive antibodies, the PRA. It's how unlikely you are to, how likely you are not to match an, a random donor. Okay, so so high PRA means you're highly sensitized, you're hard to match. Okay, and most of us are, so here are some statistics, O is the most frequent, uh, the PRA here, you see most of us, 70% in the population are, uh, these are people on the waiting list, not, not in the kidney exchange program, on the waiting list for Cadaver, so there's 90,000 pairs there, this is the, the distribution of the how, this is low sensitized is basically if you're below 30% likelihood to match a, not, not to match a random donor. And highly sensitized also the easiest. So this is the distribution. This is the distribution. In the kidney exchange, we expect that you're going to be a little bit more highly sensitized because you don't match with your donor. And uh, if you're blood type compatible, it's more likely that you are highly sensitized. So it's, a, it's supposed to be higher than that. OK. So let me talk about uh, some early res a, a little bit about early results and efficiency in early results, and why do those results are not so? Uh, and then I'll show that those results are a little bit disconnected to the data, and I'll show you some uh, new uh, theory. But so here's a, here's a model to 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 get these uh, uh, to get the, these graphs. So there's Forget the hospital. There's, there's pairs that are randomized. Every every pair is uh, every every your your uh, you can you can draw from those statistics. You can draw a patient. You can draw a donor. Check if they're compatible. If they're <coughs> compatible, they don't join. Otherwise, they join, and so and then you draw the links between them. So it's like a ra it's you can model this as a random graph. So. Edges are also randomized according to the PRA that you, we draw for each patient. Okay, so you can easily uh, create a graph like this. And uh, one of the questions is, what will be, uh, how would an efficient allocation look like? Okay, and to 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 look at this, uh, 
in previous works, uh, we looked at uh, at uh, graphs where n is large, when the market is large, and p is a constant. And one 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 explanation that p is a constant is because my probability to match to you does not depend on the size of the population, right? So it's definitely so you have this. You're going to apply this theorem by Edo Schmeni that in a random graph there's a perfect matching with uh, when p is larger than this uh, threshold. Okay. Uh, another way to think about this, so a, a matching for those who are uh, you're most everyone is I guess most of you are computer scientists so you know, but the matching is a set of edges that are disjoint from each other. So you can basically you can match everyone. If in this in this abstract graph. Uh, so you apply this, and it's very easy to see that if you take all the possible blood types and every and the graph is very large, you will get a you will get a solution that does not need exchanges of size more than three, cyclic exchanges of size more than three. So, for example, this is think about the, the left guy as the patient type. A and the right type is the donor's type, and those are all the pairs with B with this BA type. So all of this is a large graph. This is a large graph. So at least one side, those sizes are going to be very similar to each other, and you will be able to do a perfect matching through a B, in a B part type graph. You can do, you can match here it's all the B Bs to each other in a, almost perfect in, when the graph is large. And so that's true. Yeah. So how do we measure efficiency? So here, it's efficiency is measured in number of plants. Um, um, okay, so these are the O's and so forth. So all, all of the blue, the shaded ones are going to be matched. And the, and the reason that, for example, the AOs, all of them are going to be matched, and not necessarily the OAs, because there's more AOs than OAs, because lots of O guys, O donors, are compatible with the A. Patients and we don't see them; they just go to transplantation right away. Okay, so this is going to be a smaller set by some fra some fraction of this. So those guys are going to compete over those guys. Yeah. Well, this seems to depends very much on the fraction of uh, those group of people. You can imagine one group, and the OA is very small fraction, and it cannot. Be. If it's too small, this yeah. one. Yeah. Or some, yeah or no. So. So in, you you expect in the, for any reasonable distribution that O is the largest, the most frequent. The, uh, we don't need exactly those uh, numbers, but you know that O is more frequent than A and, and so forth. So the pairs are so independent. But, but regardless of what this, these numbers are, the, the reciprocal type is going to be larger than the other one because those guys, some of them, just go directly to transportation. But both of them blow up in a, in a large way. And, and it turns out that these guys can do a three-way, can get two under-demanded pairs, and uh, this is just using the blood type. Uh, you might need a, a few three-ways here because maybe those those two sets are going to be a little bit different in size. But basically, you don't need more than three. Okay, in this large efficiency means not that everybody will be matched. It's just that you cannot do any better. With you cannot match more than. Uh, so the number of pairs then you match them. But I, I thought you maybe you had in mind something like uh, uh, life years or things like that. Oh, ah, no, okay. Okay. So, so this is how it looks like in a large. I'm sorry, is this proof constructed? Or is yeah, it just you, yeah this, is, this is the proof, basically. You can construct. This, okay. is, this is, not every allocation looks exactly like this, but this is one. You will get with high probability, there's going to exist such a. And I can find it also. Yeah. And you can find this. So actually, there's a in ter in the, to find a maximum matching when the size of the cycle is restricted to k, when k is larger than two but not unbounded. Okay, then it's a hard computational problem. Uh, so there are some algorithms that do this in large in large pools by Sandon, Abraham Sandon, and Blam, and uh, that do it really nicely. Um, but this also gives you a, 
this construction gives you also in a large market a better way to search. You know, to search here just for here. These are the only three ways. Just you need to search on here. Okay. So this is a very large and or dense or whatever market you might think of. Uh, but what we see in practice, so, so several years ago, non-directed donors started to show up. In the beginning, they used them just to give to non-directed donors, mean altruistic donors who just want to give their kidney. They don't have an associated patient. And they used to give it just to the patient, uh, some patient on the waiting list. Remember, there's 90,000 there. You can always match him, him to someone. And uh, then we started using them as exchanges, uh, like exchanges, maybe to an incompatible pair, another one, and then maybe end them in the, way, in the list. Okay? Um, and one important observation is that the cost from doing a non-simultaneous chain uh, is not so high as doing a non-simultaneous cycle. Okay? So uh, remember, in the cycle, if you do the cycle non-simultaneously, if, 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 if D2 gives to R1 and D1 fails to do to give to R2 tomorrow, R2 is without a kidney, but also without the donor. Here you can satisfy the requirement that you never give a kidney before you never give a kidney before you get a kidney. So you can do this. Not, the living non-directed donor here can give. D1 can give tomorrow, and everything. Even if he fails to, the despair is not worse off than they used to be before. Okay. So and then there was a debate to do non-simultaneous, non -sim uh, do simultaneous. There was some worry. In, in practice, there was worry that these things, if some people renege or things like that, people will not trust the system. But they started to do this. And today, we, we see, I, don't, I didn't hear about any renege or something like that. Um, in several years like this. Uh, so you see, the first long chain here was done, the non-simultaneous chain was started in July 2007. It was almost a year. Uh, you see there's different segments here. Um, the last donor is an AB donor. She, wait, uh, she waited more than a year. Her name is Elena McKinney. She, she waited more than a year to continue. Part of this is because she's an AB donor. It's a very interesting question about how to end chains and things like that. If you're going to continue, the, decide to continue the chain, wait how to continue, how to end them. But there's not many AB guys in the pool. And those who are are probably highly sensitized because they can be compatible with all of their donors in terms of blood type. So this is the same chain in the People magazine. When you see these kind of publications in the, in the, in the media, lots of people call to be altruistic donors. And uh, some of them were just, were just drunk the last night. And then just, uh, <laughs> 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 that happens a lot. <laughs> uh, it's not so easy to recover. You have to go through some psychological process. It takes your time. Um, an interesting thing about altruistic donors now that we understand better is that they have really, when they come and want to give a kidney, they say, I want to do this in August, or I want, like in this month. They have constraints about uh, jobs and uh, when they have time and so forth. That's, a, yeah, that's one of the things I think uh, that lots of people who don't join exchange, the donors, some of them don't join exchange because they don't want to give to someone else, but some of them just cannot tell their boss, sometime in the next year I'm going to have, a, someone is going to find for me a match. That's a big issue. Um, so, so we see more and more of those chains, and, and the one question is, are they effective? Now, remember the large market results. We saw that we need three-way exchanges. What if we add chains? Can we do much more? And we saw some of those results. Uh, there's other results about efficiency and so forth, uh, about large markets. <coughs> there's even a dynamic kidney exchange result, but also for large and dense pools. They, they don't, this result, they don't, assume tissue type incompatibilities, so the market is very dense. Uh, but basically, most of these results show that you don't need cycles more than three or four, and then wh what happens if you add chains to the system? It turns out that in the large market result, you see just uh, an altruistic donor can maybe help two more. You can easily show that it does not, uh, two more and maybe someone on the waiting list. But that's it. All the, 
you can easily show this. All those guys can be easily matched through two ways and three ways, and those are the only guys you can really help. And uh, you can't go back and forth between them because of the bad things. Okay. So, so what's going on? Why are they using all those pools? And so the world is is not very large, first of all, and not very dense, also. So, uh, both both in terms of how the people are so low sensitive. And so there were some previous simulations that show, yeah, three-way, four-way will be already efficient, but turns out that it's not true. So we'll see a little bit about the data, and then I'll give a different model that uh, talks about those sparse compatibility graphs. Yeah. Isn't it? It might be also the case if you just uh, in practice everything so dynamic, people just come and enjoy yeah. the system. Yeah, and everything is dynamic, so then you, you are remaining with small market. And, and who you accumulate also the highly sensitized guys over time if you don't do the right thing. Uh, so, th so those previous results are maybe good if the market is going to grow a lot and then you want to start thinking about which blood type to give to which blood type and things like that, not to waste, uh, for example, old donors. Uh, so we looked at data and the first test we just, uh, so we started to look at data like a year, a, a year and a half ago. And here's some, uh, uh, this is from the Alliance for Peer Donation, and here's a historical set of over a, a year and a half. You see this volume is still not big. Uh, these 361 pairs that we looked at as if they were all together in the pool. Okay, so we can check compatibility, so in, in hindsight. And this is if you limit the cycle size to two, if you limit the cycle size to three and four, but you see, you see there's a still a big jump between three and four, the previous results are three. And here's, these are snapshots of data sets. This is another, this is a different data set from the National Kidney Registry. So there's still a lot, there's still improvement with four. And if you add a, you can, but you cannot do those cycles because these are long, but the way to think about this is uh, maybe if we had an altruistic donor and connect to those cycles, we can do them as chain. But it, so you, if you really want to compare is this k equals three, and this is k, this is cycle of length up to size three and an unbounded chain. Okay, and this is the, what what you want to compare. So this is an additional of twenty five pairs that you can, could have matched during this year. So in hindsight, uh, these are snapshots, uh, seventeen to nine. So. so so what is going on is uh, is you look at those. So previous, this is the, the this is the PRA if you're low sensitized and high sensitized the distribution in the in the waiting list. This is what previous simulation told us. If we just take a pa draw a patient, draw a donor. If, there's com if they're compatible, you throw them away. If they are not compatible, you draw you put them in the pool. This is pretty much the distribution you get, and these are. Uh, in the in the current data set, so you see the num the highly sensitized, the percentage of those guys is very high, and if you look more closely, most of them are uh, 98, 99, and 100 percent. That that's their chance not to match with a random donor in the in the pool. Are they also mostly your types? Or? What? Are they also mostly your types or? Uh, the patients? Yeah. Uh, so about. Uh, it's more than 48 percent. It's 50, 50 something percent. That is true. Yeah. So relative. So it's yeah. It's close. It's not 55 percent. I think something like that. But not for the entire. Um, so this is comparable almost to <coughs> checking first with five, six donors before you join the pool. Uh, and if you're not compatible to all of them, then you join. Uh, this is almost compatible. Th these are these numbers. For so here you see you accumulate some uh, some highly sensitized over the process because this is in hindsight and this is a snap. So this is what a real graph looks like, and this is the graph induced by A patients and A donors. Okay, so the, everybody's blood type compatible here, but uh, you the blue ones are the low sensitized, and and the blue lines are part of cycles, the blue dashed lines. So most of them are not part of uh, cycles. And there's other 20 guys here that don't have 
any 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 link. Um, Seventeen times. So this is a real a real hindsight AA graph. Uh, if I'm sorry, go back. So you, each node is a pair, right? Each node is a pair. And there is an edge if they are compatible. If but the donor of this guy is compatible, but they're the both patient. AA, so aren't everybody compatible with everybody? No, this is. Uh, so these are black type compatible, but they're not tissue type. The tissue, okay. Good. So the tissue type compatibility is what kicks in here. Is what's the okay. important thing. Here. Okay, so this, those people are, have lots of antibodies. All of these guys. Right. This guy doesn't cannot take from anyone because he's right. So this is a graph. Everybody's not that compatible, but that's right. But okay. So you see, if you just had an altruistic donor here, you can start a chain here or something. Um, and it, what, so you see in the in the data, you see lots of people who are low sensitized, or the pro, the probability the low, the PRA is lower than thirty, and sometimes lower than ten, well, a lot of them, and and a lot of highly sensitized is above uh, ninety five. Most of them are above ninety five. Most of them are even ninety eight, ninety nine, and hundred. So you see, if you just take those pairs, so here's this O donors and AO patient. If you run this, and this is the how many. L pairs, low sensitized and highly sensitized. If you run a match of two-way cycles, three-way cycles, four-way cycles, the low guys are going to match quickly, and improve, improving the, increasing the cycle size is going to help exactly the highly sensitized. Okay, so that's that's going to be our result. Um, so it, it's convenient to think about this graph as what I'm going to talk about is graphs that part of them are dense. And part of them are very sparse, like a jellyfish. The top is very dense, are the low sensitized. And here, if you only have the altruistic donors, you can get low below. So this, this is the model we're going to adopt. Uh, we're going to have this graph, which is low sensitized pa 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 pairs with low sensitized patients. OK, these are L nodes. And to connect to an L node, doesn't matter from where, is going to be with a constant probability PL. So that's, that's, only this is like the original model. Okay, you have a random graph with probability P. But now there's also those highly sensitized guys that to connect to them is with probability that decreases with N. So it's, it's hard to connect to. Now, now the world is not that I connect to you. Uh, my probability to connect to you is depending on the population. It's the, the model is, we model it like this because Think about if, if we're thinking about a horizon of uh, two years, that's, that's the horizon I'm looking at. And in this year, there's not too many pairs. The, the amount of pairs is about 1 over p. Then you get this model. So, uh, so p is about 1 over a. OK, so it's to capture the sparsity of the graph. So in the, this is a specific modeling. So it's a good approximation. But we, in the paper, we also do uh, different levels of sparsity. So if you can. Uh, our results will tell basically if your graph is this sparse, then you need this um, this length of cycle or this length of chain and things like that. Okay, so this is how sparse the graph is. Uh, so now we don't have theory for sh good theory for finite graphs, random finite graphs, and we do. So, so we are take we are, we're adopting theory from large random, large graphs, but sparse ones. Okay. So one thing that you can show that in this graph induced by only H pairs, you get a constant number of cycles uh, which are short, which are constant length. Okay, but you are going to have, but you are going to have. This is a uh, result by Kirvilevich, uh, um, Lubetsky, and uh, Sudakov, that you are going to have a long, a long cycle. Okay. Uh, but but the, here again, the cycle size, uh, the cycle sizes are going to be uh, the short, the short cycles. There are going to be very few of those. What if we all, okay? So you you can easily compute this and show that this is a, a constant. Uh, uh, this, this number of cycles is a constant. So I won't go over this. It's a simple calculation. Um, okay. So, by the way, so if you have a very long cycle here, it's a, all the a linear, uh, all, uh, linear size of, in, in the size of the pool, 
taken one, even one altruistic donor is going to connect to one of those with high probability, and he's going to be able to do this chain. Now, now in, pra in practice, chains are not always very long, but, but the important thing here is that those transplants are on the table, and maybe bringing another altruistic donor will help. Some of them fail to be very long, and that, that's a different future research. But, uh, uh, but uh, if you bring here two altruistic donors, they're likely still to connect to different parts of it. So, uh, so here's, a, here's a, uh, one of the main results in the paper is that if you incre in these graphs, if you increase the size of the, if your CK is the allocation, with disjoint cycles of up to size k. And so here, if you increase the cycle size up to length k plus 1, you allow, you get a linear increase. And here, you keep the size of the cycles that are allowed, but add one altruistic donor, and you get this additional uh, uh, thing. Now, uh, remember, each one of those low sensitized can start the cycle. So it's not that we can directly get this uh, linear increase. So, um, so, that, that, so this result is basically by, even if you match all of those through, basically you, you start by who are, the, who are those H nodes that can be connected uh, from the L nodes and may, from the L nodes, and who are they can, who are, and then this is, this is step one distance from those L nodes, then you take two distance from the L nodes, and then up to k distance from the L nodes. And this, remember, every connection is C over N, so it stops with, uh, con you stop every time with a constant probability. So eventually you will, e you will end after k steps from the L nodes, you will end, end with a linear size graph. And in this graph that you don't have any information anymore, you're going to get this long chain, and this altruistic donor is going to be able to connect. Um, Okay, let, yeah. let me say, I'll say, I'll, I'll be a little bit more detailed on this result. Uh, it's also not very, it's not very difficult, but let me show this. And I'll just say that we get very similar results if the sparsity of the graph is, uh, if you have here n to the uh, 1 minus epsilon. Okay, remember if you go, if you go above log n over n, everybody can be matched, and that's the previous result. So this is what this is the family of graphs that, that we do here. N to the one minus epsilon, epsilon starts from zero. Okay, so let me talk about this result, increasing the size of the cycle. Uh, and again, thinking increasing the cycle means it doesn't mean that you can do the cycle, but you can but you see there's lots of transforms there and bringing more altruistic donors is gonna help. So here's a, here's a well-known result from uh, random graph theory. If you take a bipartite graph, okay, a non-directed one, uh, and, the graph, and the edge probability is C over N, then you're going to get uh, a linear size match. Okay? You're not going to match everyone, but you're going to get a linear size match. Okay? With some, this is with some, uh, there's going to be some fraction here that is going to be. So, so Qn is the size of this, is the fraction of n are going to be on this side, all the rest are going to be on this side, and you're going to match this fraction of this. Okay, again, above log n over n, you're going to have a perfect match. Um, okay, so now we're defining uh, something that is called a good cycle. So now, you have, there's a result from, again, from, uh, For any, for any, uh, there's going to be a linear for any 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 tree. There's going to be any finite size tree. There's going to be a, a linear number of trees that are isomorphic to that tree in this graph. Uh, and and think about this again. If you start from this node, think about the branching process. I, I go to my neighbor with some probability C over N. I stop, and so forth. so I'm going to develop lots of trees that are isomorphic to one each other. Okay. Now we're defining those. Uh, we're defining those uh, uh, good cycles that are basically, think about them as almost isolated. 
So all of these, these B2, for, to B1 here, only this guy connects to. These two, no L guy connects to. So we're almost isolated. And what we're showing is that um, <coughs> there are going to be linearly many good cycles of this size. And then we're going to see how to add them to the, if you take an allocation uh, allocation of um, cycles up to size k, you're going to increase it by using those extra cycles. Okay, so what you what you have here again is those those many suppose I'm looking we're looking now to so this is C K plus one C K. Suppose you're looking at K equals three and now you're looking at you want to look at the allocations with uh, cycles up to length four. So here there's gonna be lots of there's gonna be lots of uh, uh, trees that are paths of of size uh, two, okay, of, of three nodes. And we're going to show that uh, from those, and now use the, the, the B part at Elvish Reni result, connect from those guys to the beginning of each of those paths. So that's like a B part at graph, okay, but on one directed, okay, but with probability C over N. So then you're going to be able to connect to linearly many of those. So there's going to be linearly many, all of and there's there's going to be lots of those paths, but you're going to be able to connect to the beginning of those from, um, from many of those. And then uh, going back, okay, you won't be able to go from the end of the path from each one of them to each one of them, but for lots of them, you are going to be able to go back because going back is probability, a constant probability. So that's easy. So for lots of them, you're going to go back. You look for a matching on the other direction. Okay? Uh, so here we use the going back to the exact point root is going to be easy, and then we're going to use those paths. In, so if this cycle is is really disjoint from the previous allocation, we just add it from the allocation with k equals two. We just add it. If it's if there's some uh, if there's some uh, intersection, it's going to be intersected with only those two nodes. So we throw this one and add this one, and we gain by at least one node. So we we're going to add gain at least one node from each of them. So there's a counting argument, a simple counting argument. OK, so th this is basically the idea of this proof. Um, OK, sure. Yeah. So does it uh, suggest a different kind of algorithms to compute the cycle of power of the Does it, if there's a? Suggest a new way to find and match. Is currently used by. So, so this can suggest uh, how to look. Uh, no, I'm not. No, actually not, because this guy just shows that uh, we increase. If you move from k to k plus one, you know how to increase by a linear amount. It doesn't mean that this is the optimal. You, you might still leave uh, people. Okay. So here's again. Uh, I think this is this is the story. Basically, the story of adding. Chain, having chains or longer cycles is that the, 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 this is, uh, the cycle length is the left and the right, the right is the chain length that is allowed and here's everything is unbounded and this is the number of pairs matched and if you go from left to right you match all the easy to match one very quickly you don't need the, the extra length of the chain or cycle but the highly sensitized are exactly those that are matched. So in all those results that I showed you, the, there's a linear, the, there's extra rho n matches that you get, the extra linear amount you get goes exactly to the H guys. The, the low sensitized will always all be matched. So here's, here's a chain of 30 pairs um, that was over a year in, in 2011. Uh, this is a this is a compatible pair, by the way. Uh, that uh, in just one of the better kidney. Uh, in, in the, so age matters, and uh, sometimes weight matters. There's, there's different things that can matter. How much? How is the match in terms of our antigens? How they match to each other matters. Uh, and in fact, there's a single hospital kidney exchange program in in San Antonio, and they are pretty good in give, getting compatible pairs into the pool. They get more than others. And part of this is uh, 
because uh, they tell them about the option of exchange before they even check if they are compatible. Uh, so I, I don't know how you test this thing. It's hard, to, but but that's what they do. In fact. Another thing that that is interesting to to to, to mention is that those altruistic donors. Uh, so you see hospitals, they come through hospitals sometimes, and you see, but hospitals share them. And uh, you might think, why, why should a hospital share an altruistic donor and not just start a chain in the, internally, just like they sh don't do? So it turns out that some of those programs, they tell you, if you show me an altruistic donor, we will end the chain in your, one of the patients in your hospital. So that, that's an interesting way to get them in, and, and I think there's room to get other pairs in. Give more priority. One thing that we talked about in previous papers: give more priority to those high, your highly sensitized pairs. Uh, if you show me more easy to match pairs, okay, to your hospital, Please, in that spirit. But, uh, but I think it's a real problem how to get those graphs more dense, especially getting more low sensitized. Because, um, by, by and. Um, okay, so let me talk a few, uh, just a few more minutes about uh, dynamics. This is work in progress. Um, so the, those those pairs come over time. Okay, so this this these results explain what happens, uh, also what in hindsight in the size of the pools that we see today. Okay, and if the, these pools really grow, maybe it will be more dense, and we don't need go to the previous results. But, so what happens now with, with uh, uh, trade-offs between weighting and number of matches? So you can think about dynamic optimization. Uh, instead of that, what we're, but we're doing something simple here in this simulation that you see here. We take uh, two-year data, and we think one concern is, uh, is that what if those kidney exchange programs match too fast? They, they don't wait for more pairs to, to arrive and accumulate and find more options. So people are concerned that maybe this screws up the highly sensitized pairs, especially. Uh, and what you see in this data is that if it, it's uh, 500 pairs. It's, uh, yeah, it's 500 pairs. And if you match every day, every week, every two weeks, the, the, the arrival rate here is about 15 pairs per month. So, and this is a year. So it's not very scaled, but what you see is that there's no, almost no benefit if, between waiting a month and waiting a day. Okay? Uh, and this is the way average waiting time of those guys. Um, <clears throat> and if you look at just highly sensitized guys, you get pretty much the same phenomenon. Uh, so, so we wanted to... Uh, what we're doing now is trying to explain what's going on, and we're... Uh, looking, so, so, so I mentioned the result by Utko Unver who did dynamic optimization, and over there he doesn't need to wait at all. The part of this, the reason is because there's no tissue in type incompatibilities in the system, so it's like a very, very dense graph or very large. So, and you can show even a probabilistic result that if you wait, if, 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 the, if you do this, if you do a random graph and everyone arrives and with probability P connects to every, to uh, connects to those who exist in the pool and people connect to him with probability P and if P is constant, you don't need to wait at all. You're going to match almost everyone. So that's not a good result because, not, not a good model for the pools we see now. So we're, we're do what we are doing is adopting the same model, but pairs are going to arrive over time. And every delta periods, every delta pairs, we're going to do a match, a maximum match. So that's what they use today with priority to high sensitivity. That's what, that's what happens. Okay, so each of those are going to arrive at, at a different day. There's going to be n pairs in the system. They're going to connect to who is, with those probabilities, to who is there, to whoever is there. And what, and, and, and what we get uh, is that if delta is the, if delta is the, are the steps, uh, how, many pair, how many pairs you wait till you you press the button and look for a maximum matching at that period, you get that uh, if this delta period is a sublinear function of n, then, you, then the, it does pretty much like the online matching. 
okay, if you match every day. This m is the size of the match if you weigh delta. Okay? If you weigh a linear fraction, you're going to add a linear uh, many more matches. So this is also random graph? This is random. Every time a node comes, he connects with those, those probabilities. It's this, it's this exactly LH graph. Okay? Um, yeah. Uh, so the, 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 those connections between here don't matter a lot. Even if you don't connect between pairs here and you leave them, and you, you don't touch them, you still... You, this is, the heart of the proof is just this bipartite graph, uh, even without those connections. Just the, because the, in the C of N, there's not, not, almost not going to be any two-way cycle here anyway. Uh, so th so the, and I should mention this result, uh, no, it's actually for two ways and three ways. It's without chains. This is without chains. Um, so, so the main idea basically is that if, if you're going to wait a very, if, you're, if this is the residual graph, and you're waiting for those pairs, if this, if this chunk is small, then those, uh, those, those, those there's not going to be for any of the, his neighbors, he's not going to connect to those neighbors. So this, the, those are going to be, if this chunk is sublinear size, those are going to be uh, separate components, and you're not going to do wrong by doing an online matching. Once he can connect, just connect it. If, if the, you have here, uh, if, the, if, the, if the size of the chunk is large that you're waiting for, and you're comparing to the online, you're way, you're, so when this guy arrives, he can connect to either this or this, but you, in the online, uh, you don't see, so this, if this is the time, let's say he can connect, this is the residual graph, and so when he comes, he can connect to either this or this, and you don't know to which one because you don't see this guy instead. So you're going to see lots of those kind of augmenting paths. So if you connect to this, you made a mistake if this is the situation. So if you're going to connect... Uh, so you're going to see lots of those kind of augmenting paths in hindsight if you do if you don't if in, uh, if you just do the online versus the waiting a linear fraction that's the, that's the idea. Uh, so what, one conclusion uh, I think that uh, is leading us now to do is with all these sparse graphs is we have multiple exchange programs today two leading ones the National Kidney Registry and Alliance Prison Asia. And if every graph was big, if each pool was big, it wouldn't matter too much. They can work separately. But you're starting to think, what? How, there's a big loss here because they're not working together. And here we just did some first, this is really from recent days, some first simulations. Uh, here it's also, there's also some, there's also one donor in the pool that can start, a, one altruistic donor that can start a chain, but also cycles of two and three. And what you see here is, it's the same kind of simulation. You, we take both, both pools. All together, there's about 1,000 pairs. And on the blue one is we pool them together. It's just one pool. And we match every five pairs, every 10 pairs, every 20 pairs. And if you separate them, uh, leave them separate, and you do every five pairs, 10 pairs, this is how much they match all together. You add up how, the, how much this one match, how much this one match. So it's not like if you wait uh, for 20 pairs in the separate situation, you're going to get matched like in the, in the pooled situation with 10 pairs. So this, this big difference is because of those sparse graphs. You can, you can easily... Uh, so it, it's, also, it's almost a conclusion by what we see with uh, the dynamic uh, graph, dynamic matching. Design. And the most important, I think, is that those here, COC, those are highly sensitized guys that are matched. So those who almost have no chance in their own pool, 99% uh, they don't match, or 100, somewhere in between there, uh, you see lots of those guys are going to be matched. So, they are, uh, so we're going to push this a little bit more and see what happens if you add how many altruistic donors you need to have in order that merging is not so is not needed and things like that. But if not, to push in this direction. Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll stop here. Uh, I'll just say that 
kidney exchange is pretty slow. Um, this is in 2010, how many pairs? It's not exact, but it's from the UNOS website, the, the National Organ Sharing Network website. Uh, how many pairs have been matched with exchange? It's about 700. 2012, it's getting about to 900. Uh, 2011, at least, it was about uh, 800 or something like that. It's growing, but not fast. And this is people on the waiting list in town. So it's still slow. Uh, so to conclude, just uh, yeah, it's really we're looking at markets that are sparse and want to deal with how... One question is how to get those pairs inside, and the other thing is how to do those matching. and know how, how important chains are. So, so, so far, I think chains are very important, either to do it in very long if possible, if not to bring lots of others together. There's questions about how many others do you want. Maybe you do get a benefit sometimes to close some of your chains and give to people on the way. Yeah. So, you said that the market price of kidneys in Iran is very low. So in, in Singapore, they also have this ah, market for selling. But I mean, I don't know if there's a market. Uh -huh. Okay, I don't know. So in China, in China there was a, I saw it's not allowed, but there's already two uh, two articles about children who sold for iPads. And iPads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>